Homemade devices, homemade devices. Well, you've already seen this one, well, kind of. I used it in the big 12 episodes building a patch. This is a five inputs, four outputs matrix mixer <clears throat> that I built in an old VHS video case. Basically the way it works, each input is split to these four outputs and each pot here controls the level or how much of that signal goes to each output. It's, I mean, once you comprehend, it's like a Cartesian grid. And these are ins, these are outs. I've got five inputs, but only four of them have mini jacks just because of the space. The way everything is crammed up in there, uh, there just wasn't room. Or there might have been, but uh, I also didn't have very many of these jacks at the time when I made this, so uh, seven might have been all there were. Anyway, what you can do with this, I mean, you have four separate mixes. You can do like a stereo pair and then a whole separate stereo mix that you can send somewhere else or you have two effect send channels. And you can theoretically take an effect channel, process it and send it back in on another input, feed it back into itself. It doesn't work as well as I might have hoped because there's a lot of signal loss involved in a passive mixer. Um, but I used this for my previous series of videos, so you guys have heard it, even though you couldn't really see it because it was down here on the table. Uh, this back here, we have not seen in action. I guess I should call it the Dalek sure it's in frame look at that I uh, built these things inside some old Talenti gelato containers that's nice plastic and uh, use some epoxy to anchor the lid to the top of this one so I could like stack two modules together and not have to worry about the top one falling off the upper half is a mixer, and the bottom half is attenuators. If I need to control the volume of a channel, I decided I wanted to be able to do that, so I built attenuators for it. Now, my outputs are at the top. My inputs are around the sides. So I plug something in here. Take a signal out of one of my oscillators. And then I flip the switch, sends it to one side or to the other. Now, these are ganged up in pairs. So if I take a, another, my other oscillator and plug it in to the bottom side of this switch, the switch will route them to opposite sides. Hear that? It's a, it's a stereo flip-flopper. And I have six of these all the way around there. And now if I wanted to attenuate, well, if I wanted to attenuate those, I'd have to plug them in to one of these attenuators. And I'm just going to send that to a different channel. And now I can control the level of that by tweaking this knob down here. Because I, uh, is that in the frame? Yeah, it is. I can move that knob, adjust the volume of that signal if I need to. 
a lot of times you can just send them straight in and uh, it's fine this is why though the mixer half has 12 inputs I only have six attenuators down here in the bottom to make up for that deficiency uh, there's three more in a uh, these are tic-tac containers and they work exactly the same I've got an input I've got an output and I can adjust the level by turning the knob so with this and that together I've got nine channels of attenuation for 12 channels of mixer and you saw me in a previous video use this contraption to mute channels uh, I can do that also with this mixer because the center position of that switch is off so it's it's moderately useful I have assignable left and right it isn't a smooth like with the matrix you can use these pots to really kind of fine-tune your left and right positioning with this thing it's either you know it's, it's got to be left or it's right you don't really have a an in-between <clears throat> I could get an in-between by cloning a signal, plugging it into both inputs, and then using an attenuator to adjust the levels of the two sides. But that's, I mean, I might as well use the matrix mixer if I'm going to do all of that. I don't think I need to re-demonstrate this because we saw it once before. It's uh, This is also a, a three position switch. In the middle, it does nothing. But as you'll remember from my previous videos, if I turn it this way, it mutes the signal. And rather than have both sides do the same thing, I put two guitar tone capacitors. So flipped up that way, there's a slight tone cut. It's really subtle though and most of the time you can't really hear it making much of a difference just checking on my time oh i've got a couple minutes it's not it's only eight minutes so far this thing all this is these are adapters so i i've got a couple of cables that are mini on one end and quarter inch on the other but they're <clears throat> Most of my recording equipment is this size, but all of the modular equipment is this size. And so I built a bunch of adapters and all they do is just convert from one to the other. That's all that's for. <clears throat> um, this thing is an effect feedbacker which I built specifically to make this delay work like it's supposed to. How can I demonstrate that? I'm gonna have to